Spännande forskning och eh, mycket att lära. Jag ser fram emot en rapport som släpps här den, i, i början av mars. Nu ska vi ge oss in i trendspaningarnas värld. Vi ska få möta Deloits globala trendspaningschef. Han spanar på trender inom teknik, media och telekom. Jag tror att just sådana här typer av trender kan vara intressanta när vi letar efter investeringar. För det som tidigt kan observera en trend och lära sig hur man ska investera i det förändrade mönster som trenden ger, den kommer att kunna tjäna väldigt bra pengar. Upp på scen bjuder jag nu Duncan Stewart. Welcome. And uh, I say uh, the floor is yours. Tack. Hey, hey. So, do I have my first slide? Good. TMT predictions. Technology, media, telecommunications. Deloitte has been doing this for 13 years. Five years I've been coming to Sweden. It is the most accurate forward-looking predictions report in the world. And today I'm going to talk with you a little bit about some of our predictions from a year ago, some from this year, and even a sneak preview of what we will be discussing in 2015. 80 5% accurate. Let's start off by talking about some of the big themes that you've probably heard in the world of technology, media, and telecommunications. Cloud, mobile, social. I don't know, I'm a tech guy. It takes too long to say that. You know what they call that? Clomoso. No, no, you can work that into your conversations every day from now on. What's going on with cloud, with mobile, and with social? Let's start off with something you've probably heard about, not just cloud computing, the idea that you keep your pictures up in the cloud. Not the idea that when you do a search, it's not searching on your computer, it's searching out there in the cloud. One of the biggest trends today is what's called big data. And companies around the world, companies with millions, billions of dollars, tens of billions, hundreds of billions are spending enormous fortunes on accessing the power of big data. But here are you, sitting in Stockholm. You can't, you can't use those tools. Show of hands, who here knows how to program in Hadoop? Who here has heard of Hadoop? Two guys, good, we're on a, we're on a roll. It costs so much money to get into this game. You need so much knowledge. You need data scientists. You need data appliances. Not in 2014. All of a sudden, the tools, the analysis that is behind big data is now being available through the cloud. So whether you are an individual, whether you are a small or medium business person, the breakthrough is the barrier to entry to accessing data analytics is falling as cloud computing opens up the power of big data to individuals. And I think that's a tremendously wonderful trend, especially for investors. The PC is dead. You've heard it. PC sales were down this year, down 9% in units down 13% in dollars. It was, in fact, the worst year in the history of the personal computer industry. Throw out your PC, nobody uses them anymore. Except data taken January 2013, 14, for Europe. Yes, the number of page views accessing your NordNet portfolio, looking at your bills, Yes, it's down. Yes, mobile is growing. Yes, smartphones are growing. Yes, tablets are growing. Even game consoles are growing. Yes, PC is falling, but it is falling, as you can see, to around 80%. Four-fifths of all the pages viewed in Europe last month were still viewed on the traditional personal computer. Smartphones and tablets are wonderful devices, but they are additional devices, not replacements. But maybe those are old people. Young people don't use PCs anymore. If you have a six-year-old, they love tablets. And that's true. But when we asked 5,000 people 
one year ago. Which device is more important to you, your tablet or your personal computer? Matures, those over 65, 60% still prefer the personal computer, 40% the tablet. But trailing millennials, those 18 to 23 years old, actually prefer, 92% prefer using their personal computer to their tablet. Everything you have ever read about how young people don't like PCs anymore is not merely wrong, it is backwards. What happens is that at age six, you start with a tablet. At age 16, you switch to a personal computer. And at age 60, you switch back perhaps to a tablet. It depends whether you want to consume data or create data. So once again, personal computer, uh, very important device. Now that's a picture. <laughs> Anybody remember that one? Yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a Dell computer from 1993. And I got a story to tell you about social. But I need to start in 1993. I worked for a Canadian fund management company, pension fund. The guy who ran it was spectacularly smart. He was 61 years old and he was a genius. The portfolio numbers were off the charts, many percent ahead of his Canadian competitors. He's a great guy, but he didn't know how to use a PC. Not only did he not know how to use it, when the machine in his office shut off from a power failure, he couldn't turn it back on. He had to call his secretary to come in and turn it on. When he went on vacation, he printed out all the portfolios and took them down to the swimming pool and worked with a calculator what the changes. He, he managed a $21 billion fund and he didn't know how to use a PC. Because in 1993, you didn't have to. You could be a successful money manager and not know how to use a computer. In 2014, everybody who manages money knows how to use a computer. And the reason I'm telling you this is that Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, these services and others, social media is exactly where the personal computer was in 1993. It's optional. If you're not on Facebook, don't worry, it's not a problem. If you're not on Twitter, no problem, it's fine. LinkedIn, eh. That's today. Five years from now, that will not be true. So you can make the decision, do you want to be on social media? Do you want to learn about it today? Because you don't need it today, but you will five years from now. And if you aren't learning about it today, you will be at a disadvantage five and ten years from now. I want to talk about this one idea that I have. This is 2014. You've all heard of the mass market. You've all heard of the niche market. And I want to talk about the mass niche. In a planet, in a planet of 7.4 billion people by 2017, with 5.4 billion adults, 4.5 billion literate adults, 4 billion smart, uh, mobile phones, 3 billion smartphones, Billions of devices. Quick math question. What's infinity divided by 10? It's still infinity. In a world where we measure markets and audiences in the billions, even very small parts of very large markets are still very large markets. And I'm going to do a kind of fun example of this. Let's take a look at smart glasses, wearable computers. Oh yeah, you've heard about Google Glass, but this is any smart glass. This is what it looks like if you look at somebody wearing them. Doesn't she look happy? Isn't this the replacement for the personal computer, the, 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 the television set, the gaming console, the tablet, the smartphone? This is what it looks like to wear one of these devices. As you can see looking through it, it's transparent. You wouldn't want to watch a movie. Low resolution. This doesn't work as well when I'm in Turkey, but who here watches hockey? Come on, I'm Canadian. I don't get to do this often. Yay! I love watching hockey. On a pair of wearable computing, you can see the players, you can see the net, but the puck is smaller than one pixel. Now, I'm a pretty big hockey fan, and I'll tell you, the game's not as good when you can't see the puck. 
They don't get rid of the smartphone. They only work with the smartphone. They cost $500. It's illegal to wear them in all kinds of places. It's illegal to drive with them. And according to a recent report, they cause blinding headaches after one hour of use. Our prediction is in 2014 that despite all the media stories you have read about smart glasses, it will only sell four million units this year for a four uh, four billion dollar, uh, sorry, two billion dollar market. Next, smart watches. We're all going to get smart watches. See my watch? The face of it's about two and a half centimeters across. I can tell the time. I can't read an email. I can't watch a movie, and I can't type a message. But if you create a smart watch that's big enough to read an email watch a movie, or type on, it kind of looks as though you've tied a smartphone to your wrist. Our prediction is this market will be even smaller. Despite all that you've read about smart watches in 2014, it's an absolutely tiny market. I want to kind of just touch on a quick one here. We have had an amazing decade. In the last 10 years, sales of computers, smartphones, TV sets, tablets, and game consoles have gone from $250 billion to $768 billion this year. What remarkable growth. 12% per year growth, but it's coming to an end. We, instead of buying more and more money on hardware and devices, are freeing up money. Because less money for hardware means more money for software, for services like internet connectivity and higher speeds, and more money for content like movies, like music, like television shows. I want to talk as my final one about something called the phablet. P-H-A-B-L-E-T-S. Anybody know what it is? It's a phone tablet bigger than... F Who here in the room owns a phone with a screen bigger than five inches? Hands? Few people, not a lot. Who here wants to go buy a really big, ugly phone so all your friends make fun of you? You don't want to. You look like an idiot talking into the thing. It doesn't fit in your pants. You can't type on it one-handed. People don't want phablets. This is what happens when you ask a survey of everybody in the room. Do you want something a lot, a little, not at all, in the middle, a uh, little negative, really negative. It's called the normal distribution. We ask Canadians if they want to buy phablets. Okay, we didn't actually ask about the weasels. Not only do they not want them, not only are they indifferent, they hate the idea. Okay? Well, but those are older Canadians. What about younger Canadians? Nope. What about middle-aged Canadians? Nope. Men? No. Women? No. Rich? Poor? No. Education? No. I just did a little game with you. You are all now predictions experts. You have found out that people, that, that, that people in their 30s don't want them, their kids don't want them, their parents don't want them. Nobody wants phablets, these new phones with the bigger screens. But there's a funny thing going on. Not so much in Sweden and not so much in Canada, but around the world, we are predicting that 25% of, of all phones sold will in fact be phablets. And to go back to this chart, in the history of the world, in the history, there have been exactly two consumer products that have sold more than $120 billion. They're the, they're the personal computer and the smartphone. TV sets, nope. The peak was about $110 billion. Uh, uh, tablets are having a good year in 2014. They'll be about $98, $99 billion. In other words, phablets, the thing that nobody in this room owns virtually, that nobody in this room wants, will in fact at 300 million units, $417 average selling price, be the third biggest consumer hardware market in history. Welcome to the era of the mass niche. The era where even small parts of sufficiently large markets transform the world. Because, I'll show you, I actually own a phablet. Just let me open it up here. I'll even turn it on. They're so big, you can read it at the back of the room, can't you? No, that's not true. But think about this. I bought it because I have kind of bad eyes. 
and I like being able to text on the much bigger screen. But because of that, I also watch more video. I see more ads. You want to trade stocks? Who here wants to look at a technical chart on their favorite stock on a three and a half inch screen or on a screen that's actually three times the size? A lot of implications, a lot of changes in there. I'm going to close off with this one, something called MOOCs. Massive open online courses, courses from Stanford, from Harvard, available not for $50,000 a year, but $50 to learn first year physics. Our prediction is that there will be 10 million MOOCs registered for in 2014, and therefore my prediction is that at the end of this year, this is what Uppsala will look like. It's not my prediction. Many of the people who sign up for MOOCs never take one course. They don't finish the assignments. They don't take or pass the exam. Three to seven percent of people signing up for massive open online courses actually finish, meaning that worldwide all of the MOOC courses completed represent the little skinny green line and university is the rest. So for 2014, much like some of the other ones you've read about, there's an awful lot of hype in the MOOC market. But although I'm five, four seconds over time, where I think MOOCs actually have a lot of interest for this audience, imagine learning about finance instead of having to go to school. Imagine taking a, 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 a real first year securities analysis course for $50. And who cares whether or not you get the credit at the end? You can gain the knowledge for a very reasonable price. Gunther. It's inspiring to hear you about all the trends, but what I and probably many people in here start to think is, uh, how could I invest in those trends and make tons of money? <laughs> probably a couple of big ways. One of them is, my job is, so I used to be a fund manager. I used to pick stocks, like Barbara. Now, I just give you the information. Go find this stuff. Email me. There's a whole report out there that's got this stuff in it. One. One, so much information, so much open information. Number two, use technology to help you invest. Gain access. If you're following a stock, it shouldn't maybe be something that you go on vacation and you don't know about anymore. You've got a tablet or a mobile phone. Use technology as a tool to help you invest further. Uh, I think that combination of, of gaining access to information and then using technology as tools and a lot of it is about building your network. Uh, in terms of real-time information, professional traders look at Twitter to find breaking news. Are you?